Boy, that Tales of the Citadel episode sure had a lot of Easter eggs in it, huh? Return of Evil Morty and all that. Lots of theory fodder in there, am I right? Don't worry, I'll get to that one soon enough, but there was one detail that I wanted to point out that isn't enough for a full episode and one that all the next day analyses overlook that I wanted to talk about. Specifically, this chart. See how Reverse Rick Outrage is at the end of the chart, but still has a 15% approval rating, which is higher than the rent is too damn high, Rick? Well, it's an incredibly smart jab at one of the most subtle ways news media can and does bias what it's showing you. Looking at the graphic, most people would think that Reverse Rick Outrage is in dead last, but he's not. And that's even if they see him at all. They've buried him in the back. It's an easy way to discredit a candidate, a technique that was famously used during the 2012 presidential election to undermine the strong poll results and growing popularity of Republican candidate Ron Paul. Long story short, the reason I'm pointing this out is to not only draw attention to an underappreciated Rick and Morty Easter egg, but also to tell you, just be aware, sometimes the data doesn't lie, but the way it's presented does. Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show where we take your favorite series, let them marinate in our salty mind brines, and pop out crunchy, delicious theories just a short time later. And with that as the opening sentence of this episode, two things should be made immediately clear. Number one, we're talking about Pickle Rick today. I'm Pickle Rick! And number two, I've got pickle puns for days. Thinking them up wasn't even that cumbersome. Or should I say, cucumbersome. Nope, I really really shouldn't. Now sure, season 3 of Rick and Morty may have taken a little bit longer than expected to arrive, but honestly, this was nothing compared to the wait we've got coming for season 8 of Game of Thrones. Winter is coming. Now it's here. Now we just gotta wait like two more years. But when it comes to Rick and Morty, the wait was totally worth it. Season 3 has delivered on both the lore side and the science side. Now, in the past, I've focused mainly on the lore bits. Click the link in the corner of the screen if you're behind on those. But I've never actually spent any time getting into the nitty gritty of what makes Rick and Morty not only the funniest show on TV, but also the smartest. Parallel universes, reality simulations, memory-altering parasites, the list of things to explore is as endless as the channels on an intergalactic cable box. But as someone who appreciates memes as much as science, no analysis of season 3 would be complete without a look into the science of Pickle Rick. Not exactly whether Rick could realistically turn himself into a pickle, he can't, but instead, how possible Rick's alien-esque cockroach and rat mech suits would be. A quick recap in case you missed this episode, Rick turns himself into a pickle to escape family therapy. I turned myself into a pickle, Morty! As a pickle, he gets washed down into the sewer drain where he's surrounded by cockroaches. He bites the head off of one and then manipulates its brain with his tongue to make it walk. The next we see him, he's fashioned a suit of cockroach armor to kill rats. He dismembers one, fuses its limbs to his pickle body, connects his brain to the rats, and then goes on a good old John Wick-style pickle murder rampage. You know, a classic Rick adventure. Or, should I say, a Vlasic Rick adventure. Uh, no, you really shouldn't say that. Cynical hypothetical viewer, you're sounding a bit older and more grizzled than usual. Yeah, 30 years of vodka will do that to you. I'm Dan Harmon. I'm the co-creator of Rick and Morty. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> welcome to the show. Wait, did, did you just come on the show to tell me to stop making puns? Well, not just to tell you to stop making puns. I just wanted to save you the trouble of making this episode. Pickle Rick is something we just made up. We thought, hey, what's a funny vegetable we can turn Rick into? And we landed on a pickle. Uh, sorry, but you're wrong. What do you mean? Pickles are hilarious. No, obviously a pickle is hilarious. What I mean to say is, and I hate to correct you, but it's not technically a veggie. A pickle is a fruit. Because they have seeds, pickles are technically a fruit of the vine. It was decided by the U.S. Supreme court. But it's made from a cucumber. Yeah, fruit too. I mean, if you want to get really specific, cucumber is a peepo, which is a type of berry, and a pickle technically fell under the classification of condiment, but uh, don't worry, people will debate it out in the comments. Well, whatever it is, we just thought making Pickle Rick would be funny. We do a lot of scientific research for this show, but this wasn't one of those times. Pickle Rick is not rooted in actual science. <sighs> Yeah, I, I hate to be the butt actually guy, but uh, actually. The existence of this channel tells me that's not true. Okay, so maybe I really love correcting my favorite creators, just not to their faces, but regardless, I wouldn't be too sure of that one either, Dan. Tell you what, stick around for the rest of this episode, and if you're still not convinced by the end, I'll give you 25 schmeckles. You know we made those up too, right? Fine, lunch. If I don't convince you, I'll buy a lunch. Hmm. Huh. 
Well, I have watched all the episodes of Hoarders on my DVR, so I guess I've got some time on my hands. Let's do it. Awesome! We'll investigate this together, just just you and me, and then we'll go on more adventures. The adventures of Matt Pat and Dan Harmon, forever and ever, six seasons in a movie! Maybe let's just start with the one. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just got a little excited. Now, before we get into just how plausible these feats are, we should determine exactly what Pickle Rick is. Is he completely human, with just this pickled exterior, or is he more pickle than man? Dan, can you shed any light onto this? He's a pickle in the streets, but a rick in the sheets, if you get my drift. I really honestly don't. Look, man, I don't know. Obviously he has Rick's brain since he talks and thinks, but it's not like he has a whole human body inside his pickle shell. When Jaguar shoots him in the side, Rick doesn't bleed, but he does feel pain. <laughs> He also mentions at the end of the episode that he missed having a stomach, so he's missing a lot of his bodily system. Man, I missed having hands and blood. And a stomach. Okay, so for the sake of simplicity, let's say that Rick has a functioning human nervous system, brain, spinal cord, etc., and everything else that we can see, like his eyes and mouth, but that any other body system that doesn't contribute to his immediate survival is missing. Sounds good? Deal. So let's take a look at the first body that Pickle Rick takes over, that of the cockroach he bites to death. After the roach stops struggling, Pickle Rick rips open its exoskeleton and begins prodding its brain with his tongue. After a few tests, he determines how he can activate the roach's legs and wings, thereby carrying him along with its carcass. It would certainly seem at first glance that this is all nonsense, but as with most things, some scientists have already demonstrated how to do this. According to a study titled Central Complex Control of Movement in the Freely Walking Cockroach. Holy crap, there's people that hook cockroaches up to electricity and practice mind control on them for a salary? I am in the wrong profession. Seriously? I think it get boring after, like, a day. No, boring is being controlled by insects, which is the entertainment industry. Wow, that was, um, shockingly honest. Speaking of shocking and breaking an awkward silence, in that study, researchers proved that by stimulating certain parts of a cockroach's brain, they could get it to walk, change directions, even climb completely at will. Rick's methodology is obviously less sophisticated, but so are the results. The main takeaway here, though, is that by supplying small impulses to the roach's brain, it is scientifically plausible that Rick could make certain parts of the cockroach twitch and crawl enough to carry his briny body along. Now, hold on just a second there, Matt Pat. I've read that study and wait what you have i have interests beyond fart jokes and dungeons and dragons you know I, as i was saying that study indicates that the cockroach's brain was stimulated with electric current and probably more importantly those cockroaches were still alive so how on earth is rick getting a dead cockroach to walk good questions dan first thing it is totally possible to get dead bodies to behave this way by pumping them full of electricity heck we've known that dead animals plus electricity equals movement since demonstrations in the late 18th century by a scientist named giovanni Al Aldini. Aldini famously demonstrated that by hooking a corpse's brain to a battery, he could get the muscles in the faces, hands, and legs to move. It was actually this kind of demonstration that inspired Mary Shelley when she wrote Frankenstein. That still doesn't solve the problem of the electricity. Electric pickles, while an excellent band name, don't seem very realistic. Pickles are actually great conductors of electricity. But you don't have to believe me, check out this illuminated pickle switchboard created by Chili's for a rave they were throwing. Because apparently Chili's is where sanity goes to die. Or bad marketing decisions get made, one of the two. I prefer Shoney's. Hey, to each their own. At any rate, pickles conduct electricity so well because their high sodium content gives them a strong charge. And if we concede that Pickle Rick has a normal human nervous system, that means he does have electrical impulses running through him. So him prodding that roach's brain with his tongue is the equivalent of jabbing it with a small battery. It would likely take a bit more trial and error than we see in the episode, but it would be possible to find the certain regions of the roach's brain that control its movement, and then stimulate those to make himself a little zombie roach wagon. You win this round, Matt Pat. But then how do you explain Pickle Rick's rat armor? There's no stimulation of the brain there. Are you telling me that you think Rick could control a rat's brain remotely? I don't just think it, Dan. I can prove it. Pickle Rick's rat suit seems to be controlled by the rat's original brain and spinal cord, which we see him attach himself to in the episode, even linking the rat's brain to his own with a metal spike that may or may not be a sewing needle. With this kind of brain-to-brain -brain link, it is absolutely absolutely plausible that Rick could control the rat's limbs, even if they are now attached to him. In another study conducted by scientists at the University of Washington,
Washington, who, if we're being honest, were aiming just a wee bit higher than those roach-steering guys. Two subjects had their brains linked through a system of electrodes. When the first person thought about moving his or her fingers, nothing else, just thought about moving his fingers, the fingers on the other person would move. Now, before we get it into our heads to take over the classroom bully's brain and get him to punch himself over and over again, saying, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? I should mention that this kind of technology is in its earliest stages. But let's not forget, Rick is the smartest man in the universe. He can travel interdimensionally. So it's safe to say that he could make this work. His tools are definitely rudimentary, but the mechanism that he uses to remote control the rat's limbs totally makes sense. So humans can control the brains of other humans, yeah. But I don't think we can assume that this means we can just hook up our brains to anything we want. Rats have weak, tiny brains. Pretty much all they do is scurry and eat and occasionally teach ninjutsu to mutated turtles. You bring up a totally reasonable point, but it's not like Rick is trying to get the rat to recite Shakespeare. All that his rat body needs to do is run, jump, climb, and slash. Those are exactly the kinds of things that Rick should be able to make it do. Even though a rat's brain is small, the part of it that controls a rat's movement, the motor cortex, is actually structured very similarly to the human's motor cortex. Admit it, Dan, the science of Pickle Rick is a whole lot sounder than even you realized. Cockroach ventriloquism is just a small electric charge away, and there is scientific proof that a human brain could control the movement of a rat's body remotely, as long as their brains are somehow connected, which they are. That's all true, but to quote my cardiologist, there's a big problem here, and it's salt. Pickle Rick's body is obviously going to be a lot saltier than that of your average scientist, but as you said yourself earlier, he has a human brain. You've got a degree in neuroscience, right? Pickle brine blood isn't going to be good for the brain. <sighs> Yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't bring that up. Fine. Dan's right, you guys. While it is hard to know exactly how much of Pickle Rick is still Rick, the human parts of Pickle Rick are gonna have a whole lot of trouble dealing with the pickle parts. Insert your own pickle parts joke here, viewers. I mean, you've certainly inserted your fair share this season. Rick's got a lot to be proud of. Anyway, normal sodium concentration in the human body is a pretty narrow range, from 135 to 145 millimoles per liter. If you go just a little bit over that, to a range of 100 60 millimoles per liter or higher, you'll start to experience symptoms of salt poisoning, otherwise known as hypernatremia. And if we imagine that internally, Rick's body fluids are essentially pickle brine, which we kinda see in the episode when Jaguar shoots him and he starts bleeding brine everywhere, well, he's in big trouble. Pickle brine contains about 380 milligrams of sodium per fluid ounce. So after we do some conversions to determine the solution's molarity, it's called math, we find that pickle brine has a sodium concentration of 559 millimoles per liter, or about four times the normal amount found in the human body. Which means it's not looking too good for Rick. And it gets even worse because the highest recorded sodium concentration in a human was less than half that amount, at 255 millimoles per liter, and that amount of salt ended up being fatal. The reason salt poisoning is even a concern is because salt causes cells to retain water. So Rick's hypernatremia would cause his still human brain cells to swell with water, resulting in seizures, and eventually death. So, like I said, this theory that Rick can somehow survive out of his own body is pure fiction. Looks like that trip to Shoney's is all mine. Well, not so fast there, Dan. I'll admit that Rick is gonna have a hard time living as a pickle, but there is a different green piece of produce that might have worked a little bit better. An avocado. Avocados actually have much lower salt content than pickles do, and what sodium they do contain would be kept in check by their high levels of potassium, which also helps regulate the flow of fluids into and out of cells. Avocados also apparently conduct electricity because I guess somebody out there has hooked up a battery to every food product to see if you can run a current through it. Plus, avocados contain a number of vitamins that are vital for brain function. And avocados are what the internet would like to call thick full of trans fats. Fats that are essential for the coding of neurons, so signals can be sent from the brain through the nerves, and in Rick's case, to the rat's brain. So there you have it, Dan. I mean, granted, Avocado Rick doesn't have quite the same ring to it, but Rick's plan isn't entirely without scientific backing. Only now, instead of fighting rats, he'll have to fight off millennials trying to scoop him onto an overpriced piece of toast. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And... Hold on a sec, you owe me a lunch. What? I, I just demonstrated that Rick could somewhat plausibly survive using science. The bet was, could Pickle Rick be a thing, not could Rick turn himself into any item found in a farmer's market? Pay up. Hey, fine by me. Going to lunch with the creator of two of my favorite shows is not a loss in my book. So, we going to Shoney's then? Nah, that was just another bit. How about Chili's? I, I got a hankering for some baby back ribs after you mentioned it. You struck me as a sizzler kind of guy.
guy for some reason. By the way, can we talk Evil Morty? Just wait until the end of the season, this Sunday at 11.30 p.m. on Adult Swim. Or immediately afterward on YouTube, since their live copyright detection is pretty crap. Well, that's one thing we can both agree on. <laughs> <laughs> can we eat now? You drive. I don't have a car. Wait, wait. Before we go, can you tell everyone to subscribe? Shameless plug much? I just let you shill for Adult Swim, dude. Seems even. I came on your show to be poorly photoshopped and serve as a straw man for your scientific research. You clearly come out on top here. Please? I'll throw in a skillet chocolate chip cookie. Fine. Subscribe by doing the bell thing. You heard the man do the bell thing. Now back to Evil Morty, you see. I've got this theory coming up. Do this <laughs> they, can, they can also... By the way, did you like the fact that I noticed that you...